Hello and welcome to Nothing But Bananas First Film Analysis video. I'm Scott Geelan and this particular video is the first of a three part series in which we'll be taking a look at the 49ers most polarising position group, the free safeties. Despite widespread clamouring amongst the 49ers fans for the team to add players at the safety position, the 49ers failed to add any new faces to the safety room this off season. This is particularly galling given the prototypical free safety for the 49ers scheme, Earl Thomas, was actually available in free agency. As such, competing at the free safety position this season will likely be Jimmy Ward, Adrian Colbert and DJ Reed, although Joukowsky Tart could also be an option at the position. Understandably, there are some doubts about these options at the free safety position amongst 49ers fans, primarily caused by injury histories and inexperience. However, before getting into the 49ers free safeties film, it's worth touching on the film of the man who defined how the position should be played, the man who the 49ers passed on, Earl Thomas. Before landing on injured reserve this season, Thomas demonstrated he was suffering from no lingering effects of the injury that actually ended his 2017 campaign. Although, it might be fair to say that the 49ers may well have been reluctant to pay Thomas given the fact that he just suffered from two successive season-ending injuries. Nevertheless, Thomas's high level of play should have induced the 49ers, in my honest opinion, to make a move for his services. He eliminates the middle of the field and he's always around the ball. This is both a product of his elite field vision and route reading ability, his elite play speed and his willingness to trust his own abilities to stay as close to the line of scrimmage as possible despite his deep centre field assignment. When you add in his superb tackling ability, Thomas truly is the complete package as a deep centre field free safety. His interceptions in 2018 are prime examples of his ability to always be around the football. The first, against the Denver Broncos, is the perfect example of the no seams, no post rule in cover three. This is the scheme that the 49ers tend to run and their free safeties have to adhere to exactly the same rules that Thomas shows and an adherence to so successfully here. Thomas initially backpedals off the snap, but he doesn't take himself out of the play. His ability to read the triangle of the number one receiver coming up the seam and Case Keenum ensures he is in position to break on the ball before it's thrown. The receiver, perhaps cognizant of Thomas's presence, in fact, he's probably stunned Case Keenum even attempted this pass, doesn't even bother looking back towards his quarterback, and Thomas is able to cleanly break on the ball and record the interception. Thomas's ability to read the field, stay close enough to the ball to enable him to make the play, and then break cleanly on the pass all contribute to the apparent ease in which he makes this play. Whilst his first interception against the Cowboys doesn't look quite so easy as his pick against Denver, it's another example of Thomas's ability to always be around the football. It's worth noting his starting position, about 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. He flatfoot reads this play and possibly keying off Prescott's drop does not retreat more than a couple of yards because he knows the ball has to come out quickly. He breaks on the slant and is rewarded by a bad throw that allows the cornerback back into the play and a tip ball that falls into his own hands. It's also worth asking if Thomas's mere presence forces Prescott to try not to lead his receiver into Thomas's awaiting shoulders, thus forcing the apparently bad throw. Thomas being around the ball definitely allows him to get the interception, merely because he's in the right place at the right time. It may actually have forced Prescott into the bad throw itself. Much as the same as the last play, here in cover one, Thomas is cognizant of the quarterback's drop, as well as being aware of the down and distance, third and short. He once again, flatfoot reads the quarterback, reading Mitch Trubisky's eyes and the receivers in front of him. He's breaking on this slant way before it's thrown, but in this instance, the receiver does come up with a catch before being hit by Thomas. This play against Denver is another example of Thomas covering the seam in cover three. The number one receiver is heading up the seam, and once again, Thomas perfectly reads the triangle of the quarterback and receiver before breaking his Keenum shapes to throw. This final Thomas play is another superb demonstration of his mental processing. It's cover one, and Thomas somehow seems to know Keenum is likely to check the ball down to his running back. This may be a tendency that Thomas is aware of. He's breaking on the ball way before it's thrown and is able to make up for his teammates' missed tackle to make the stop for a minimal gain to leave the Broncos in third and long. The above examples mean that Thomas's quality should be clear. He's mentally, physically and technically elite at the free safety position and sets a staggeringly high benchmark for players playing the spot in the same cover three schemes that he played in, in Seattle. Thomas's elite capabilities give him the range to play sideline to sideline and the ability to be repeatedly impactful making plays coming forwards, 
whether on seams and posts, crosses, slants, or against the run. As deep centre field free safeties go, he's the benchmark. Whilst it may be unrealistic to expect such elite levels from the 49ers own options, it is nevertheless worth considering quite how close they've come to matching the levels of the former Seahawk at the free safety spot so far in their careers. Jimmy Ward appears to be the early leader in the clubhouse in the race to be the 49ers starting free safety. Ward is the best tackler on the 49ers defence, having only missed 10 tackles in his entire career and recording a tackling grade of 90.4 per PFF this past season. He regularly marries exceptional tackling technique with superb near-hit pursuit, a crucial ability at the free safety spot. This series of plays are all excellent demonstrations of this. We should note the angles that Jimmy Ward takes to the ball, as well as, crucially, the way he tends to drop his stride length whilst increasing his cadence as he approaches the ball carrier to enable him to adjust to any late changes of direction that the guy might make, before he accelerates through the collision. This kind of physical but sound play is exactly what you need from your free safety. Ward also improved notably in coverage as the deep safety this season during his brief time at the position. Against Arizona, it was clear that Ward was often too swift to backpedal off the snap, taking himself too far away from the play. He needed to play more like Thomas, showing more patience with his footwork and faith in his own eyes. On this play, in addition to starting over 15 yards away from the line of scrimmage, Ward backpedaled a further 8 yards off the snap. He also broke on the ball comfortably after it was thrown, with inefficient footwork, and failed to respond to the receiver's routes in front of him. It begs the question as to what he was actually reading and reacting to. All this combined to ensure he was nowhere near the ball on a tightly contested throw that could well have been bobbled on another day. In a similar play against the Cardinals, Ward failed in his responsibility to protect the seams. This was something of a staple in his 2017 film. Whilst his starting position of 16 yards off the line of scrimmage in the two-minute drill isn't a massive issue, his backpedalling an additional 5 yards following the snap once again arguably takes him too far away from the play. As we have seen, Thomas conversely shows a real ability to always stay within range of the threats to his zone. In this specific instance, however, Ward could perhaps still make the play if his break was a little cleaner. He reads Rosen well enough to be breaking on the ball just as Rosen winds up to throw, but rather than driving straight downhill like Thomas is capable of doing, Ward takes another couple of strides away from the ball before he comes down to it. This has the effect of lengthening his route to the ball just enough to ensure it gets there before he can make a play on it. The difference between this early iteration of Jimmy Ward and Earl Thomas was that one was in position to make the play, whereas the other, routinely, was not. However, as he gained more experience at the position, Ward's coverage certainly improved. This play against the Raiders was an early sign of that. Ward starts just under 14 yards off the line of scrimmage and though he backpedals a decent way off the snap once he sees the offensive line pass block, he reads the seam wrap by the Raiders' tight end well whilst responding to it effectively but altering his pedal, moving more laterally than backwards and staying closer to the play. Though he breaks just after the ball is thrown, the efficiency of his footwork and his positioning ensure he would have been in excellent position to make the play on the ball had the throw been more accurate. Here again, Ward shows more patient footwork to keep him closer to the play. He starts 15 yards off the line of scrimmage but his footwork is notably more controlled as he retreats comfortably less than 5 yards while shading over Oakland's number 2 receiver to the 3 receiver side. He once again breaks cleanly once the receiver breaks inside. If the ball had come his way, he would have been in position to contest the throw. It's also worth noting how the depth of Fred Warner and Tyvis Powell also denies the throwing window to force the check down. Ward's patience with his footwork serves him well on this play. Not only is he close to the ball when it's thrown, He's able to stick his foot in the ground and break cleanly downhill due to not having significant momentum going backwards before delivering a shot on this slant route. With better anticipation, he might have had a real shot at breaking up this pass from the free safety position. Therefore, we can see that even after just one game, Ward was beginning to look more like Thomas with his ability to impact the game in front of him. This upturn continued somewhat into his game against New York. Though he did bust a coverage badly in cover two man, he generally showed continued patience with his footwork and an ability to impact the plays in front of him. This slant is a continuation of this theme. Ward also showcased his impressive range on a couple of occasions. On this play, he flashed his speed and anticipation in unison. The combination of those abilities is crucial to effective sideline-to-sideline -side range, though his positioning, 
the third key aspect to such range, was less good. Breaking on the ball well before it's thrown is understandably valuable to covering from the opposite hash mark to the sideline. Ward also showed good range to get back in this play after Odell Beckham Jr. got in behind a Kelly with a spoon. However, Beckham likely would have grabbed a touchdown had the throw been better. Part of the issue here was that Ward wasn't responding to the quarterback especially effectively. He's backpedaling straight down the hash for others from Beckham, despite Manning's eyes being locked on Beckham as soon as he completes the fake handoff. Compounding the issue, Ward only begins to break towards Beckham as Manning is winding up to throw. Had Ward been reading and responding to his keys more effectively, he might have been closer to the ball and the receiver, potentially coming away with an interception on the underthrown pass. Whilst discussing Ward, it is also appropriate to consider his versatility. His cornerback experience and quickness ensures he is a more than capable man coverage defender against tight ends, running backs and even wide receivers, which provides some interesting flexibility for the 49ers with regards to Ward's usage. His footwork is generally clean and it's certainly arguable that he's a better man coverage defender than Earl Thomas. He also possesses some ability as a blitzer. As a result of Ward's versatility, the 49ers could move him and likely strong safety Joukowsky Tart around pre and post snap in order to deceive offences and create better matchups for themselves on a down-to-down -down basis. It has to be an attractive proposition for the 49ers defence to add some much-needed unpredictability in much the same way as the Los Angeles Chargers achieved last season. To conclude the first part of our analysis of the 49ers free safeties, you can certainly see why the 49ers were willing to bring Ward back for the money that they did. When you combine his superb tackling ability, his impressive, though not elite range, with the improvements he showed in a short time in his capacity to play closer to the ball, his potential of given time at the free safety position is abundantly clear. This is not to say he's as good as Earl Thomas, it's clear that he's not. None of the 49ers safeties are. Nevertheless, if he continues to improve his ability to read and respond to quarterbacks and he stays healthy, he could start to show some real playmaking ability. In part two of our mini-series looking at the 49ers free safeties, I'll be looking at Jimmy Ward's most notable rival of the spot, Adrian Colbert, a man who showed real promise as a rookie but apparently dropped off last season before suffering an injury and ending up on injured reserve. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay faithful.